Hi guys, I'm Laurie Vitali, and on this episode of Laurie the Kitchen, we are getting spicy, we're getting sizzling, we're getting excited, we're making homemade chicken fajitas, which I love. And I am almost certain that in the last 13 years of being here, I have never showed you how I make my chicken fajitas, which are actually so simple and easy to put together. I feel like the spice mixture is a game changer. I am making this in my trusty, old, classic, inexpensive, beautiful cast iron skillet, but you can also do this on your outdoor like flat top griddle if you've got a black stone or anything like that, that would work great. So all you need for the actual fajitas themselves is not a lot. You're gonna have your chicken, of course, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breast. I've also done this with thighs with great, great results. Uh, peppers, I'm using uh, red, orange, and green. Calm down, I know, but it's good. In here, it's good. Uh, onion, limes, and then for the spice mixture, it's very simple. You will need some chili powder, granulated garlic, onion. This is some granulated, this is paprika, granulated cumin, oregano, smoked paprika, a touch of brown sugar. The brown sugar sort of offsets a little bit of this pungent heat from all of that chili powder and the acid from the lime also helps caramelize the chicken, plus some salt, plus some pepper, plus olive oil, and it is just, sublime. Um, what I'm going to do really quickly is mix all of my spices together. So it's quite a bit, but we've got a good two pounds of chicken. And what I'm using here is the sort of whole chicken breast, obviously boneless, skinless, um, because I am going to show you how I like to cut my chicken for my fajitas. Okay. If you've got a whole chicken breast, I just like to go and cut like strips like this because it cooks really fast. It also stays really flavorful and juicy and it just gives you, it's already ready to go. You don't have to cut it after you're cooking it and then risk losing all of those wonderful, delicious, juicy bits. So this is just great. If there's any bits that you want to cut out, uh, do that now, trim it off now before you, before you marinate adding just a little bit of olive oil. I'm only adding the olive oil to the chicken so that basically the spices adhere. And then a good amount of black pepper, freshly ground of course, just makes all the difference. And then some salt because all of my seasonings and my seasoning blends are always salt free so that you can always control how much salt you add to your food. And then your spices. I'm gonna add about three quarters of my spice mixture and I'm gonna leave one and quarter behind because I'm gonna add that to my peppers and onions because I want everything to have fantastic, beautiful flavor and the juice of some lime. Now, I'm gonna give you options because life is full of options and we love that. I'm just gonna do one whole one. Um, you can marinate this way in advance. You can marinate this the night before if you want to or if you're like me and you're strapped for time, um, you don't have to marinate it any longer than like 10 minutes. So the choice is really up to you. Just give it a really good mix. I'm actually just gonna switch to my hands. I already washed my hands from when I cut the chicken, but I just wanna make sure that the chicken's well coated. And that's perfect. You don't wanna have so much excess spices because spices will burn and then they become really bitter. So you see how the chicken is completely coated and it's like changed color from that chili and the paprika and whatnot. That's what you want. But if you have lots of like dried up spices everywhere that it can't even make contact with the chicken, it's just gonna burn. So don't, no need to overdo, I promise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this here for now just so that I can wash my hands, slice my peppers and my onions. And that's really the only time I'm gonna give the chicken to marinate 10 minutes or so, and it's perfect every time. You'll see. A good tip when you're cutting your bell peppers is to cut around the pepper so that you can try and minimize the amount of seeds you're gonna have to fight with um, when you are slicing them. So just like that, go all the way around, get rid of any of that stuff right there, just, and then give it a nice, thin slice, not too thin, because I really do want to keep some of that texture on the pepper, especially when you get fajitas, or like, I don't think they're cooked to death, they still have a bit of texture, which I kinda like. All 
All right, I've got my big cast iron skillet getting nice and hot. Now, I wanna just chat about something really quickly. We've got lots of peppers and onions going on. We've got lots of chicken going on. What we don't want is steamed chicken and peppers because that's not what we're going for here. We are going for caramelization. We're going for deliciousness. So I'm gonna have to do this in batches if I want to ensure myself that the chicken will not steam in its own juice and the peppers have enough space to build that beautiful flavor and color. If I were doing this on my Blackstone, you can do the whole at once because it's jihugic. I only have a small, well it's not actually that small, I only have my cast iron skillet here so I'm gonna have to work in batches because I want to create those flavors. So I'm probably gonna do about three batches of the chicken and the chicken's gonna cook really quickly because it's thinly sliced and then I'm going to remove it and do my next batches. Look how good that chicken looks. I did do this in three batches as promised because I want my chicken to have that kind of color. Look at that. It's delicious, it's sizzling, it's just a party. And we haven't even added our colorful friends to the skillet. Add a touch more olive oil. Don't crank it up as high as it goes, especially at this point because we are going to be doing the peppers and onions in batches as well. Because again, we don't want steamed peppers and onions. We want caramelized peppers and onions. Put that in there. A little bit of that seasoning because we're going to put this up among the two. And then this also needs some salt. And then just cook them a few minutes until they develop some color, begin to caramelize, cook down, do all kinds of beautiful things. Second batch of peppers and onions look fantastic. Now we just unite everything because this is, this is how you're gonna bring it to the table. You see how the peppers are still really holding their shape? That's what I want. I don't want soggy peppers for this. I want everything to really hold their shape. And of course, I'm using clean tongs because the tongs you use to handle raw chicken are not the tongs we are going to use to handle fully cooked chicken. We don't want that cross contamination. That looks great. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some cilantro. Now, obviously I don't have to tell you that there is not an ounce of authenticity in this, but there is so much goodness, so much deliciousness. And honestly, I feel like you just gotta enjoy life. You know what I mean? And sometimes life is just better when you bring out a, a sizzling pan of fajitas, okay? I'm just saying. A little bit more lime. I turned everything off, by the way. But the cast iron skillet is still quite hot. That is gorgeous. That is what I want. Look how beautiful. Spectacular. It did not take much effort at all. And now I'm going to build myself one. What do I like on my fajitas? Tortillas, obviously, must be charred. Oh, must be a little bit charred. Like I said, this is not on, but the residual heat is doing really beautiful things. You can use corn or flour tortillas, whatever your heart desires. I'm using flour today. Truth be told, when I bring this to the table tonight, I'm going to put both on the table because I like options. Nice and charred to it. I'm gonna set these aside for a second. I'm going to add my delicious chicken and peppers. Oh, that chicken is so delicious, by the way, because I've already had some. Um, and I can affirm that it is indeed a delight. I like a little sour cream. Kind of cools everything down. I like a little salsa. Again, not an ounce of authenticity here, but you know what, let's live a little. Let's live a little. That is still piping hot, and you can hear it. Hold on, this is gonna be piping hot in my mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, I love a fajita. I love, listen, back in the day, 21, 22 year old Laura, Joe, all our friends, Don Pablo's on a Friday night. 
you always got the chicken fajitas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That, total happiness, I promise. Laura in the kitchen.com for the rain recipe. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me. I will see you guys in the next one. Please make this.